Bless you. Be seated. Whether pulpit or no pulpit, Pastor Margaret likes to pull my nose, my leg, and look for my trouble. Right on the campus. Things have not changed. Please, I'm a beggar. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I wonder why there are this uh, at the number of people fasting in the church for the 100 days announced. They said that they fasted for 100 days and it's too close. Um, well, I came here in September for the first time. Uh, but in Victory Temple, I'm not a stranger. Otherwise, this place we were, we were flowing with human beings, if it's Victory Temple. Uh, I'll be part of the history of Victory Temple right from the old days in a secondary school somewhere. And we thank God for the days of little beginning that have become mighty, mighty oak. And we haven't seen anything yet. Glorious days are ahead in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless that all of you are members of this assembly to have Pastor Mrs. as your pastor. I can tell you the grace she carries is unique and peculiar. Yeah, absolutely. I know that. Absolutely. Uh, inside my high time, I say, uh, maybe long ago, I always say in Yoruba, Obrimbi Okone. <laughs> that is a woman like Ma because of the way God configured her both physically and spiritually and it's just for a purpose like this that man, mankind may draw grace from our life and we thank God because that grace will never expire yeah. she will remain forever a current affairs Never a past tense in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the pastor there could not be my friend for ages. Uh, I don't need invitation to stand on his pulpit to minister. And like I said on Saturday during the VG, maybe some of you were there. Only him could have pulled me out at this time to be preaching. It won't happen except that the Jiro. But because it's very precious in my hands, I bent all the rules to be able to respond to his summons. To be there, as some of you will not understand, but uh, Pastor himself will be here tomorrow to explain to you. At this time of the year, the big masquerade does not come out. But the rules have been bent because of a peculiar, precious people who have poured water in front so they can step on wet ground. And we have with us today wonderful family, friends, and co ministers. Reverend and Reverend Mrs. Joseph and Ruth Osawaru. <laughs> Pastor Osawaru has been known to me, particularly the wife. In fact, the wife we worked together in the same office. Why we were uh, NIFES, when I was national leader of NIFES. That's almost 40 years ago. And we thank God that everybody's still doing good in the Lord. We have not expired. We have not backslided. And by the grace of God, one day, we shall see the God of glory. Thank you, Father. 
Our Lord, we thank you in the name that's above every name. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures. You have not asked the house of Jacob to seek you in vain. He says, seek me and live. We have come to seek the Lord. Our souls shall live. Our bodies will live. Our economy will live. Our families will live. Our ministries will live. Our spiritual lives will live. Our children will live. Because we are seekers of the Lord. When there was a contention about the leadership of Aaron as the priest, God asked the children of Israel, every family, every tribe to bring a dry rod. One rod for Naphtali, for Zebulon, for Judah, for Reuben, the tribe. And all the dry robes were placed before God in the holiest of all. Overnight, the rod of Aaron budded. He brought forth leaves and fruit, almond fruits, overnight fruitfulness, because he stayed in the presence of God. In the name that's above every name, everyone that has stayed this long in God's presence, may you begin to bring forth fruits. Abundant fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. If a dry rock budded overnight, you have stayed 100 days. I command your fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Let your period of barrenness, your period of drought, your period of dry season be over in the name of Jesus. You will have the effect of this fasting. You will have a take-home package. In the name of God Almighty, before April expires, there will be something in your hands to show that you have waited upon the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. May your life turn around. May everything around you turn around comprehensively. May those who did not fast begin to envy you. Because I waited upon the Lord. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. May all your flagging strength be renewed. Thank you, Father. Blessed be God forever. Lord, be pleased to walk in the midst of this assembly. As you walk in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, walk in the midst of this congregation. Irrespective of our numbers, do what no man can do. Drop a blessing behind and let the heart of Mary rejoice. Blessed be your name forevermore. The problems, the headaches, the tribulations, the visitations we are brought to the altar of the Lord today will not follow us back. We drop them at the foot of Calvary. Let them be swallowed up forever. We thank you, Father. We ask in Jesus' name. I'll be sharing this message in duplicates. Today, the foundation will be laid. Tomorrow, I will teach and preach and we will war, we will pray. It's impossible to do justice to it in one go. So I'll split it into two. And it's something you need to listen very well. I'm not going to try to excite you. Otherwise, you'll lose the essence of it. Because I've seen a lot of frustrations in the church. A lot of disillusionment. A lot of unfulfilled hopes, yearnings, and aspirations of Precious Christian people, genuine Christians, who pay the price of Christianity, but they are not getting the results of Christianity. 
and it's largely due to what I call spiritual ignorance. Many people are actually prayer. They pray, oh, let me go that way. They pray very well. But many folks are prayer illiterates. They don't understand the mechanism and the dynamics of prayer and the principles of prayer, what makes things to work. And we know everything in life works by principle. If you don't master the principle of something, no matter how zealous, how eager you are to make that thing work, it won't work because you are not master. Now, driving has principles, isn't it? You learn about the brakes, the steering, the trafficator, the accelerator, and all of that. You just have to learn it. Operating your PC, your computer, principle. To pilot, you need even preaching. That's why they have school of preaching, school of ministry, theological schools. So everything works by principles. Ditto for prayer. So, and that's one reason God sent us many years ago to start what we call the prayer school, which is a phenomenon in Nigeria and Africa now. Guess many prayer school, guess many prayer academy. And who is so in the body of Christ in Nigeria, uh, in the corporate body, in politics, in governance, many of them Christians have attended the prayer school. And everything turned around when they became educated in prayer. So it's not enough for a man to be throwing words and be shouting and screaming. He has to understand the mechanism of prayer, the principles of prayer. It has to sink. So when you are praying, you are praying from a wealth of understanding a depth, of understanding, of comprehension, how this thing works. And your prayer may not necessarily be shouting, screaming, doing all sorts of acrobatics. You may kneel down in your coolest way and negotiate your destiny with God. And things happen. Mama Hannah in Samuel chapter 1 did not have to scream or shout. The Bible says her lips were vibrating but her words were not hard. And yet she got it somewhere. Barrenet was broken. No screaming, no shouting, no dancing, which occasionally is good to just make us feel good and to make sure we don't slumber off. But essentially, Prayer is not a, effective prayer is not a function of noise. It's not a function of shouting and screaming, okay? It's a function of understanding. Somebody say understanding. So you got to understand the basics. What makes it to really work? And then you, you can do your prayer very well. But I'm not teaching on prayer, but I'm teaching on an aspect that can deliver results to you when you pray. That's why I'm splitting it into two. So the title tonight is I need my inheritance. I need my inheritance. God willing tomorrow will be dealing with contending for your inheritance. Everything you are doing in prayer Making demands on God, binding and losing has to do with your inheritance. Everything a man can ask for in prayer has to do with your inheritance. But if you don't know inheritance, you are babbling, you are praying, and all of that, you know uh, how to handle it. Sometimes I pity people. When a precious Christian brother or sister loses his job and uh, he takes sin like that, it's one of those things. They fired me, I lost my job. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I just smile and say, Well, here comes another ignorant believer. Because the abnormal has happened. The abnormal has happened. Oh, in the space of six months or one year, you have lost about three or four or two or three jobs. And here you are despondent, bitter, withdrawn, and all of that. And you are complaining. Everybody is sympathizing with you. 
You don't have to be sympathized. You need to be pitied. Because the abnormal has happened. It is not permitted for a child of God to lose anything good. Are you with me? It's unscriptural. It's not allowed. Anything good. You should be both an obtainer, a container, and a retainer. You obtain from God, you contain it, and you retain it. So many Christians don't know how to retain. They can obtain through prayer and fasting, but they don't know how to retain God's blessings. And when the enemy knows that they don't have the capacity to retain, he baptizes them with what I call the Amumbo spirit. They get a loose spirit. They get it, they lose it, they get it, they lose it. And it can happen in any department of life. Whether it's in business, in job placement, in pregnancies. I've seen a Christian woman who lost six pregnancies in a row. And you have to say, sister, this is not normal. Stop crying. Half knowledge and know how to walk. It's stopped instantly. In Christ's holy name, you will never lose any good thing again. That amen is in the mortuary. It needs, your amen needs resurrection. I need my inheritance. Lord, please give us understanding. In the great name of Jesus Christ. Joshua and chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. Now, before I go to the book of Joshua, I want to make three statements quickly. One, life is generally unfair. Life will not give you what you deserve, but what you contend for. Life is generally unfair. It won't deliver to you what you deserve, but what you contend, demand, and fight for. Number two. No one will freely give you your rights, your privileges, your dues, and entitlements unless you demand and contain for them. No one will freely give you your dues, your rights, your entitlements unless you contain. The way life perceives you is that you are ignorant of your rights, your dues, and your privileges. Life, or wherever you work in organization, in different places, they perceive, that's their perception. That you are foolish, that you are ignorant, that you don't know your rights. That's why governors in Nigeria sit on old people's pension until old men rise up and make demands and fight. Some die in the process. The money is there accumulating interest for the governor of whoever. They say, oh, they will not demand. These old people, they are about to die until they rise up and begin to make noise before the money is released. So no man will freely give you what you deserve. Your dues, your privileges, and it's global until you demand for it. Most times when I get to some hotels in different parts of the world, because I'm black and I don't speak 
My accent is usual. I don't try to manipulate anything. I'm just myself. So, somebody from Africa, a black man. So, I paid the right price for a good room, but the rooms are not the same, you know. Some are big, some are small, some are well decorated, but they are the same price. So, the black man from Africa who doesn't have accent, they put him in one dingy room in one corner. So, I get to the front desk. I say, sorry, is this the best room in this place? Oh, they say, we don't have any other. I say, most times I get the room cleaners to take me to the rooms of that category. And I see some like palace, some like this. And they put me in this. So I go to the front desk. I say, I need room 201. They say, it's not, I say, that's a law. It's available. I paid my money. So, I make a little noise. And the guy say, okay, we are sorry, we are sorry. It is vacant. And the cleaner is about to finish. I said, where were you before? Where were you? It happens everywhere. So he thinks this one doesn't know anything. It's just coming from the bush. He won't make any demand. Anything is okay for him. And I say, sorry, I know my rights. I put my feet down. That's how life perceives people. Are you with me? Many Christians are too dosa. They have no fight in them. So that's why they are serial losers. Serial losers. They have no fight. They have no guts. Not only to contend with men, but to contend with Lucifer. The one that is behind all deniers. In the name of the Son of God, receive the ability to fight. Are you with me, sir? So, like I said, we have two main problems in God's church. One, the problem of ignorance. Number two, the problem of docility. Inability to fight. And it's not just you. Israel had it of old. And we're going there tomorrow. The reason they left Egypt is to enter finally into their prophetic inheritance, the land of Canaan. And everybody longed for Canaan. They wanted it. Now they got to the fringes of Canaan and the Lord said in no unclear terms several times, I've set the land before you, which I swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, go in and possess the land. It flows with milk and honey. Now, there were occupants in the land, several great nations, the Amorites, the Gigasites, the Jebusites. God said, I'm going to uproot the incubants and plant you because the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. Their lease is over. Their tenure is over. I'm bringing new occupants into the land of Canaan. So they go to the fringes of the land. God said, possess the land. Then he goes on, in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24, he said, Rise up and contend with the Amorites, the Gigasa. He said, This day I will begin to put the fear of you in the hands of all the occupants who shall be terrified of you. Fight. The moment they had the war fight, they froze. Oh, they thought it was going to be a walkover, not knowing that the occupants will not leave their land without a fight. Are you with me? So the moment God said, Contain. Israel froze. He said, we can't go. We look like grasshoppers. Those guys are giants. We cannot. We shall be prey. Our children, our wives shall be captured in battle. This, and they get on running until God say, enough of this. Enough of this. Where were you? Did you lift a finger in Egypt when I decimated the military, the economy power of Egypt so you could leave Egypt? Where were you when I lifted my finger over the Red Sea and it parted for you? Where were you? My power will go ahead of you, but I must have a physical presence. Are you with me? I will fight for you. My angel will fight for you. My men must be on ground. Are you listening to me? Because angel will not fight the battle of me. But angel will assist me, disorganize and disorient all your enemy. Put them in confusion, but there must be troops on ground. Now you go, and the power of God, they say, we cannot, we are afraid. And God said, you are afraid? That will cost you 40 years. 
Are you listening to me, somebody? The moment they had the word contain, they froze. So you need to know that it's the same now. Christians don't like contention. They don't like fight. They think everything is a walk over. <laughs> Are you there? As you sit now, there's somebody sitting on your job in this America. Somebody's there. And that person will not be moved, transfer, or retire without you doing active warfare. Are you with me? You don't know that, but you have applied to several places and the door is closed. But the door is not closed because you have not contended. Because your father God owns the land. Are you with me? We are going there. So there are precious jobs waiting for you as the daughter and the son of the bona fide landlord of the heavens and the earth. Jehovah, are you with me? No Christian ought to be doing any odd job if they have understanding. No matter at what corner of the universe, it doesn't matter. The reach of the Lord is irrespective of geographical location, topography, or whatever. Are you with me? In the name of the Son of God, your inheritance you will receive back in the name of Jesus. Joshua and chapter number one, 14. Multimedia, can I see it ahead here yeah? in both letters because of my eyes? Joshua chapter 14. Can I have it on the screen? Multimedia. Are you there? From verse 1. All right, let's go to verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephne, the Kenizah said unto him, That knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me, and thee, in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy the land. And I brought him word again, as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went with me made the heart of the people melt, but I only followed the Lord my God. And Moses one that they say, surely the land we are on thy feet are trodden shall be thy heritance and thy children forever because thou hast only followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive as he has said this forty and five years. Now his age is 85 years. Listen very well. Forty and five years. Even since the Lord spake the word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And lo, I am this day four score, that's 20 times four and five years, making 85 years old. Yet, I'm as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was there, so it's my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. And now therefore, give me this mountain. That mountain means give me my own inheritance. We are of the Lord spake in that day, for thou art in that day how the Anakims were there and the cities were great and fenced. If so, the Lord be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephne, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron for an inheritance. Praise the Lord. Now Joshua and Caleb were colleagues. They were among the twelve spies that Moses sent to spy the land of Canaan. Okay? And only two of them brought positive results that we can. Yes, we can. The others said impossible. And the Lord wiped them out. So only two of them remained alive amongst the old twelve. Now, how many years have passed by? Forty-five years had elapsed. Joshua had clearly the mandate of Moses by God. The land of which Joshua walked upon and the land which Caleb walked upon and confessed positive about the land shall be his inheritance. 
Because he had only followed the Lord. Joshua had it. Now, the war of inheritance was being fought. Every tribe, every person was being allotted his inheritance. And it's like Joshua forgot. Are you listening to me? It's like Joshua forgot. But Joshua did not forget. That's the issue of inheritance. No man will cede your inheritance to you until you make a demand. Joshua had it clearly. Both of them were part of the team that spied. Moses gave the mandate, give this place to him. 45 years, Joshua quite quiet. Until the man was aging. And the man said, I told Joshua, we are colleagues in battle. He will come in one day and say, now we are settled down. This is your land. Joshua kept mom. Until the man said, if I keep quiet, <laughs> if I keep quiet forever, so he went to Joshua and said, Joshua, you heard on that day. Why have you been quiet? This portion of the land of Canaan is mine. God gave you the mandate. Now give me the mountain. And finally Joshua considered. In the name of Jesus, this day, your inheritance is delivered to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lift up your two and say, give me my inheritance. Say, I need my inheritance. Sit down. We are going somewhere. So, until Caleb made a demand, his inheritance was not delivered to him. Are you with me? Are you not in the battle of inheritance? Men fight it rough, isn't it? Ah! When it comes to inheritance, family inheritance, community inheritance, tribal inheritance, People fight it dirty in family, isn't it? Some lose their lives in the battle for inheritance. They lose their lives. So the battle for inheritance is not a cheap battle. But when you step into your inheritance, your inheritance, your inheritance will make you. It will make you. Are you with me? Lamentation Chapter 5 and verse number 2. Lamentation, chapter 5, verse 2. Our inheritance is turned to strangers and our houses to aliens. Every stranger sitting on your inheritance is overthrown tonight. Israel lamented. They say, our inheritance have been given to strangers, to aliens. And our houses are given to strangers. We are no longer in control of our inheritance. It's a case of slaves riding on horses. While princes trek. Now, let me run very quickly because the clock or the timepiece I'm looking at it's not my friend at all. Let me establish certain concepts for you. One, vital tips on inheritance. Vital tips on inheritance. Number one, you have an inheritance. I thought somebody would say amen to that. Oh my goodness. You have an inheritance. Believe it with all your heart. That's where it begins. You believe with all your heart, understanding my inheritance is waiting somewhere. Okay? Acts 20, 22. And I'm going to read pretty fast. Acts 20, 22. Acts of the Apostles 20, 22. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing what shall befall me there. Go forth. Did I say Acts 20, 22? Go to 24 and let's see. It talks about inheritance there. Oh, do, 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 do. What verse is there? 
Is it 24? Which is able to give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Is it that same passage? I probably wrote the wrong thing down here. All right, Acts 26, verse 18. And roll on, I'm going to check those passages again, don't you? Yeah. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by the faith in me. That's one. So, that's the inheritance that every saint has. And that belongs to me. Ephesians 1.11, very quickly. Ephesians 1.11. Ephesians 1.11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him that worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So the Bible speaks of Christians having obtained an inheritance. I'm going to explain that in a short while. Then go to the same uh, New Testament, Colossians chapter 3, verse 24. Colossians 3, 24. Colossians, knowing of the Lord, he shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So there's an inheritance that every believer should receive of the Lord. Are you with me? Okay. First Peter chapter 1, 3, and 4. First Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that faded not away, reserved in heaven for what? For we. So, inheritance has two dimensions. Earthly inheritance and heavenly inheritance. Are you with me? But now, in this meeting, I may not be dealing with the heavenly inheritance because it is not now, but it's certain. It's not now, but so, I'm dealing with what is now. What I can assess. What can I enjoy? What can decorate my destiny? What my, can make my life better? That's what we are dealing with. So, the concept I'm establishing now is that you have an inheritance. Somebody say, I have an inheritance. Say it again, I have an inheritance. Okay? So, you have an inheritance. Number two. You know the book of Proverbs 13, 22 says, what does it say? It says, wealth and riches are what? The inheritance of children from their fathers. A good man leaveth inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of sinner is laid for the just. So, every father leaves an inheritance for his children. Isn't it? Now, you will be shocked or amazed to discover that Jesus Christ himself inherited something from God. The name Jesus is not his own name. His name is Emmanuel. The Hebrew word for Jesus is Yeshua. Yeshua means the Savior. So Jesus is not his name. Emmanuel is his name. Yeshua is the name of God. Are you with me? Oh my God, you don't understand that. Hebrews chapter number 1 verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. Being made so much better than angels as he hath by inheritance. Somebody say inheritance. Obtain a more excellent name than the angels. By inheritance that loaded from the father to him which he received. So his name is better than the names of angels. Whether it's Michael or Gabriel, the Bible says, by inheritance, he inherited a better name than all the names of angels. So what did he inherit? The name Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 tells us, and you read all the verses, there are 7 to 10. 
Even though he was God, he did not contest equality with God. But he made himself of no reputation. Are you with me? And uh, the Bible said, being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, even a criminal's death on a Roman's cross. And God seen that, says, therefore, God himself has so much highly exalted him and gave him a name that's above every name. What name did God give Jesus? The name Jesus. His own name. So he got his name by bestower and by heritage. The name Jesus technically does not belong to him. Oh my God. Are you, are you following me? May your understanding be fruitful. So, now Jesus inherited something from his father. What did he inherit? The name Jesus. Then in John chapter 16, look at what he said here. John chapter 16, 13 to 15. John 16, 13 to 15. How be it? When if the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, he shall show you things to come. The next verse. And he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Then the next verse. All things that the Father had are what? Am I? Therefore said that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So now Jesus is now coming to the inheritance. That all the father has is what? Is he says, because God is his father. So he can take out of the wealth of the father and bestow it on anyone that he wants. Are you with me? So in other words, he's saying that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a son with an inheritance. And I can judiciously use the inheritance of the father the way I want. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now we are coming to you. We are looking at the inheritance down the line from God the father to Jesus. How do you come in as a Christian? Number three. All that Christ has and died for are your inheritance as a son in Christ. All that Christ has and all he died for, they are your inheritance. For instance, forgiveness of sins is your inheritance. Oh my God, are you with me? All he died for, what did he die for? He died that no sickness may touch your body. For wounded for our transgressions, bruised for iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon it. By his stripes we were healed. And he became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. So he died that we may not be poor. So wealth and riches, prosperity are your inheritance. Healing health is your inheritance. Peace of mind is your inheritance. Follow me. It's a, not a blessing. It's your right. Except Christ is not your father. Oh my God, are you with me? We are talking legally. Now I'm coming somewhere. We are talking legally. Jesus is the son of the father. And when the father wanted to bless him, he blessed him with what? His own name and all that he has. Now you are a son in Christ. Therefore, all that Christ has and all that he died for are technically your inheritance. You have rights into it. Are you with me? You cannot be denied. Oh my goodness. Praise the Lord. If you don't let this thing sink, when Satan takes something from you, you will say, well, I'm all alone in it. You say, ah, can we receive good from the Lord and not receive evil? Maybe it's not the will of God for me to have. Maybe you explain it away. And the devil will come and take another thing. Oh, maybe it's not the will of God for me. Then you'll be fooled continually. All that Christ died for and all that he has are your inheritance as a Christian. Are you with me? You have rights. For instance, I was telling mommy today, 
We gave our son a car, all right, to use in a, a he just came from England, finished his master's degree in law, maritime law and international law, and he had a car waiting for him, which he used before he left Nigeria. Beautiful car. That car just had a little fault. Our protocol car, brand new Toyota Corolla, which we use on special occasions for visitors, and that, that, you know, he just went into the room, no permission, nothing. He beat the key, and he's been riding it since that. No pastor can do that. Nobody can call. No protocol officer can call to my house, take the key of that car. And then the papa just went, no permission. He didn't answer anything. Why? It's my right. It's my father's property. Are you listening to me? That's how it plays out. Everything that God has is your father's property. You don't need any angelic permission. Oh, goodness. You see, when some people pray, they pray beggarly. As if it's like, oh, let God just do me a favor. Oh, Lord, show me mercy. I'm not worthy. I'm not qualified. But show me mercy. Foul. Foul. You are worthy because you are a son. You have been adopted into God's family. So everything in there are yours. No angelic permission at all. Are you with me? No begging, no pleading. Authority just go there. Pick what belongs to you. The Lord opened the eyes of your understanding. We are still going on very steadily because some of you are looking confused. Number four. All things in your father's earth are legitimately yours. All things in your father's earth. Psalms 24 verse 1 and 2 say, The earth is the Lord's and what's? And the fullness thereof. So your father God owns the heavens and the earth. And all that is in them. First Corinthians chapter 3 Verse 22. Follow me steadily. First Corinthians 3.22 Whether Paul or Apollos or Peter or Cephas or read with me or what? The word. What were ye? Or life. Or death. Or things present. Or things to come. All are yours. What were anything ye? <laughs> all are yours whether a white collar job whether a very strategic appointment the Bible says all things are yours except you don't believe the Bible and blessed are us who believe the Bible with simplicity they say all things are ours are you with me therefore there is no exclusive reserve zone no go area for black. No go area for those who don't have accent. All things are mine. So you approach everything with the mindset of all things are what? A man. And it's that mindset the devil works on. Whether you know your rights or not. All things are mine. Oh, they say that job is for those who, you know, who, you know, have good accent and not a foul. Except it does not belong to God. Except that it is operating somewhere and it's not in God's universe. As long as that is in God's universe, all things are mine. It doesn't matter who is sitting on it now. They are all managers on God's behalf. Are you with me? All institutions, organizations, the MD, the prince officers, everybody is a manager on God's behalf. They may not know God though, but as long as they operate on God's earth, they are managing everything on God's behalf. And unfortunately for them, unfortunately for you, you are the son of the owner of the estate. You are the daughter of the owner. If you approach prayer with that mindset, you're knocking a door and they say, Thou are not qualified, or you are qualified, but your color disqualifies you. Are you with me? It's foul. 
Then you press the key. It's my inheritance. For all things are mine. Whether the world or life or death, all things are mine. Therefore, my inheritance must be delivered to me in this place. I insist. And you begin to war. One way or the other, the door will open. Are you with me? You see, when you are praying, the devil is testing the death of your knowledge. The death of your understanding. Whether that understanding what you are demanding for, what you are praying. Or you have illegal basis for your insistence. Are you with me? Whether it's a legal, spiritual, ba scriptural basis for your insistence on this. They don't want to test your resolve. And when you know that you know that you know, and the enemy knows that you know that he knows, he knows that he's not a spiritual ignoramus. Pray, he will give up. He will give up. Everything wants on the basis of knowledge, the light, the amount of revelation you have. The revelation you have determines your acquisition. Lift up your hands. Say, all things am I. Oh my God. Now let's say, all things am I. All things am I. Whether in Africa, whether in America, whether in Asia, whether in Russia, all things am I. Because they belong to my father. Say it again. All things am I. Because they belong to my father. Say it three more times. Amen. Please be seated. Number five. Access to inheritance is not permitted until the death of the testator or the owner of the inheritance. Hebrews chapter 9, 15 to 17. Please look at it for me. Hebrews chapter 9. Somebody with a living Bible, NIV, please get ready to read for us. I'm taking you step by step. Hebrews chapter 9, 15. 15. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of the new covenant that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from sin committed under the first covenant. 15. Or 16. In the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of him who made it. Follow me carefully. Alright? Because a will is in force only when somebody has died who made the will. It, is, it never takes effect while the one who made it is still alive. Every promise in the Bible, are you with me? Is a will. By stripes you are here, it's a will. Thou shall be the head and not the tail. It's a will. Oh my God, are you with me? I wish above all things that you prosper in every department of your life. It's a will. Silver and gold belongs to you. It's a will. Are you with me? Everything you see in the Bible, all the juicy promises are the will, all right, that what God willed to Christ and Christ has willed to his followers, his children. Are you with me? Before the death of Christ, nobody except God, Jesus lays hands on you. You can't pray yourself and receive healing. Because it's not in force yet. You can't pray for prosperity except Jesus makes fish to carry money. Are you with me? It won't work. But after he expired on the cross, he that made the will has died. Instantly, the will comes into effect. Oh my God, are you with me? So, when you pray now, you are only drawing from the will led behind by Jesus. Anything you pray for, everything you pray for is covered in the will. Are you with me? All that you need for life and godliness is covered from page to page of the Bible. So, you are drawing from the will but it has been proved that Jesus died. Are you with me? He shed his blood on the cross so we can stand it to Mr. Lucifer. He that made the will has died. So the will is in effect. I take my portion 
of the inheritance. I take my portion of the inheritance. I take my portion of the inheritance. Are you with me? You are operating legally in prayer. Oh, is, does somebody understand what I'm saying? So, you insist, I must be healed. It's not a privilege, it's a right. I must be blessed. It's not a privilege, it's what? It's a right. Because my father God will you to Christ. Christ left this will and you tender the will in the place of prayer. Lucifer, let go. You can't see it on my inheritance. Healing is my inheritance. He paid for it on the cross and his blood is already tender before humanity that he actually died. Now that he's dead, the will is in effect. Oh God Almighty. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why some people get more result in prayer than some. Well, because they're praying from a background of what? Understanding, knowledge, and legality. You stand your ground. No devil, no witch can sit on this blessing because it's part of the will. And I'm drawing from my father's estate. I have to be healed. I have to get into this office for all things am I. Therefore, the door must be open. Unfortunately, those who are sitting in the office, they are the Amorites, they are the Gigasites. Their time is over. Are you with me? So you come as an Israelite in God and said, you that are sitting on my kingdom, time up. Let the door be open for me. These are the things we have been using. We have been using. We have been using. We have I can't explain that in English. Since we believe in Christ, these are the things we use. And every door, if I tell you testimony, you won't believe. Why? Because I'm not different from you. The difference is just understanding. Understanding. All things are yours. No exclusive soul. Reserve for the white. Foul. It's not for those who are born here are foul, except God is not the owner of the heavens and the earth. And his word is final. Lift up your hands again and say, All things, all things in America, in Canada, in Caribbeans, in Europe, in Asia, all over the world, all things are mine. Did you follow me thus far? All right. Let's proceed. Number six. The dual dimension of inheritance. Huh? Eternal inheritance that is heavenly and temporal earthly inheritance. So inheritance is dual. But my emphasis will be on the earthly so that you can identify with it. Okay? Number seven. Only matured understanding kingdom sons have access to Christ's inheritance. Only matured, somebody say matured, kingdom sons and daughters. When I say sons, it covers daughters. Sons and daughters have access to inheritance. Galatians chapter 4. Living Bible as usual. God bless you. Um, multimedia for showing me the living Bible. He put it more succinctly. Living Bible translation Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Let's go. What I'm saying is that as long as an heir you know who is an heir? Who is an heir? The inheritor is under age is under age. When you read the King James Bible he said as long as the heir remains a child he differs nothing from his servant. Though is the owner of the estate. Now this one say, what I'm saying is that as long as an heir is under age, it's no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. <laughs> as long as the, the father has died, let, left a sprawling estate with money in the bank and it's in care of 
either an attorney or managers, as long as he remains a nine-year-old or maybe a ten-year-old or an eight-year-old and his name is Kule, the man who is the attorney can say, Kule! I need yes, uncle! Kule! Go and buy me something! Yes, uncle! Uncle, the father has died. He's left in charge of the estate manager. The man will play like football, not knowing that the attorney technically is his servant. But Kule will be played around and if Kule remains a dwarf, foolish, without understanding another, the man will sit on his inheritance. It's not different, not leave it there. It's not different from a servant. Can we read all multimedia? Leave it there. Verse 2. Verse 2, verse 2. The heir is subject to guidance and trustees. Until the time set by his father. Until the time he grows. Okay, verse number three. So also, when we were under age, we were in slavery, under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. In other words, when we refused to grow up into maturity, into sons, as long as you remain shallow, you be a shadow. Are you with me? If you remain shallow, you will be a shadow. You are not deep as a Christian. You don't mature in understanding. Then the enemy will play you around like football. Can I have the King James edition? That's the one you are used to. King James edition. Let's start again for you to understand. Hmm. King James. That's one. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, Different nothing from a server, although he be the Lord of a lonely boy. But he's a child. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed when he grows up into an 18 year old or 21 year old. I profess, thou shalt grow up. Oh. Verse number three. Even so, we, when we were children in the Lord, Children in the Lord means that we refuse to mature. We are not in Bible study. We are not in prayer meeting. We don't assimilate. Our word content is so low. When we were under age, we were bondage under the elements of the world. Okay? Verse, go on, please. Roll on, verse 4. But when the fullness of time is come, God sent his son, fought, made, under, made of a woman, made under the Lord. Now verse 5 said, to redeem them that were under the Lord that we might receive the adoption of some. Verse number six. He said, And because we are sons, God has sent the, for the spirit of his son into our hearts. Cry, Abba, Father. In the name of the owner of the heavens and the earth, I command your growth. I command your maturity so that your inheritance can be delivered to your hands. Can I hear loud? Amen. Amen. Now quickly, the last aspect. What is inheritance? Many of inheritance and dimensions of inheritance. Follow me carefully. Definitions of inheritance and dimensions. One, an inheritance is a strategic gener transgenerational blessing. Strategic transgenerational blessing that can benefit people from generation to generation. No wonder neighbor fought Ahab to a standstill until he lost his life in the process. Ahab said, can I have this parcel of land I just sent to my palace? I want to make it a garden of vegetables. And the man said, God forbid that I should give unto you the inheritance of my fathers. Oh, the inheritance of my father. But I'm not even the owner. This thing is from generation to generation. So it's not a case of you exchanging or paying me for it. It's so valuable because it's a transgenerational inheritance. He said, God is talking to the king of the land, husband of Jezebel. And he said, I will not. And the man said, I'm not forcibly taking it as a king using my authority. 
I will pay you the full price or have an exchange for a better one. He said, this inheritance of me in the family, I'm not going to let it go. He lost his life in the process. Inheritance is valuable. It can decorate your life and make your destiny. So, when you value inheritance, you stand up and fight. Are you with me? Nabal fought. He lost the battle too. But it's on record that he never gave up easily. In the name of the Son of God, you will not give up easily. An inheritance is a strategic transgenerational blessing. Number two. An inheritance is a blessing designed for one's uplifting in life. A blessing designed for one's uplifting in life. Number three. An inheritance or inheritance as specific blessings reserved for the believer in heaven. Specific blessing reserved for the believer in heaven. That's the heavenly one. But I'm taking everything comprehensively. Number four, what's our inheritance? Good name of parents. Good names of parents. For example, if I come to you and I, you are an MD, maybe in Nigeria, and a Christian who watch television, another, and maybe I declare my name. I say, I need a job here. What's your name? I say, Moses Enoch. I say, I'm careful to put Enoch there. You cock your head. That name rings a bell. How can you prove you are Moses Enoch? And I bring out my credentials. Oh, so you are that man's son. But I'm afraid your papers are not enough. Bet. Because of your antecedents, I will do something about it. The door is open because of an inheritance. I'm not a boy, but I'm carrying his name. Oh my God, are you with me, somebody? Or you go somewhere, and they say, what's your name? They say, I'm Eunice Awolowo. Whoever is there in Nigeria, she's back. Which Awolowo? The one from Mekene. Which Awolowo? Or Bafemi Awolowo? Case closed. Good name. The man has died long ago. But an inheritance of the name that the children are carrying opens the door everywhere. In the name of Jesus, may your name become an inheritance. I say, may your name become an inheritance that the children can tender anywhere. Are you with me? It works more than money. Both bad names are good names. Now, for instance, one of the first arm robbers to be shot in Nigeria is Ijeola Oyenosi. Where lad did you see Brother Oyenosi? Where lad did you see somebody called Brother Judas Iscarot? Bad name, nobody wants to enter into it. So, a good name is an inheritance, it delivers things to generations to come. Are you with me? So, what's an inheritance? What's the number we, ladies and gentlemen? Number five now. What's an inheritance? Spiritual riches in Christ. Spiritual riches in Christ. For example, the grace, when we talk about grace, 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 all your fair things, the grace makes things happen without much labor and effort. Are you with me? When somebody says carry of grace, the Baba Deboy carries surplus grace. It's an inheritance downloaded for Christ. How do I know? John chapter 1 says Jesus was full of grace and truth. Jesus was an embodiment of grace. So when you call to Christ, the first thing you inherit is grace. Are you with me? What makes things to happen with effortless is grace of God. Then you receive the mercy of God that God will not deal with you after your doings. Mercy makes a man to receive what he doesn't deserve. So you obtain mercy. Then peace of mind. The peace of God that passes all human understanding. Jesus told her, he said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. Perfect peace is an inheritance from Christ. Favor is an inheritance from Christ. Healing is an inheritance from Christ. He has them all. 
But in heaven, I doesn't need it. So we now can assess all that he has left behind. In the name of Jesus, you will not suffer in the midst of plenty. What's an inheritance? Number six, special gifts of the Holy Ghost. Gifts of healing, walking of miracles, word of knowledge, diverse kinds of tongues, gifts of revelation. These are from the Holy Ghost. Jesus owned them. The ninefold gifts. There are no more needed in heaven. They belong to you now. Unfortunately, some of you live your Christian lives without a single spiritual gift. It's disaster. Out of nine. Some don't speak in tongues. The cheapest of them all. The cheapest of the gifts, nine of them. Some don't speak in tongues. They've been in church since the day the church was founded. And they can't speak in tongues. Out of nine gifts, thou hast not a single one. Tragedy. He lives. Walking of miracles, prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirit, nigh of day, and you don't have one. These are precious inheritance that Jesus manifested on earth. He doesn't need them in heaven now. He has said, Any son or daughter that wants them, it's for the giving, it's for the taking. Unless you cry out for them. The enemy will not let you have them. And these are the things that make a Christian a Christian. Are you with me? The devil doesn't fear your millions. But when you carry fire or Pentecost gifts, talents, the enemy is afraid of you. Number seven. What's an inheritance? Your due or entitlements you merit or deserve in life. Your dues, your entitlements, the benefits you deserve in life are your inheritance. Nine. What's or eight? What's an inheritance? Houses, lands, properties inherited from parents. We call them inheritance. I'm sure you will like that. Nine. All that the parents have are the legitimate inheritance of the children. All the parents have. Are you a mother? Your daughter is now about your size. Does she need your permission to wear your shoe? Never. Many times, who took this shoe? Where is it? Only to see it on your daughter on the way to the church. And case closed. You can't get it back. Are you with me? The poor girl is saying to herself, this is part of my... I don't need mama's permission at all. Mama is not... Uh, oh, some women are laughing. It has happened to you. You look for it so tired and all that. She kept it somewhere. Only to just wear it and you look at it. Look at it. And your heart tells you, I can't do anything. I pray for it. Now God has given me a daughter who is now my size. So all that I have now, technically, is ours. No controversy. That's the way God feels. When you boldly ask for something, God is proud. God is happy. Instead of being timid and groovy and say, Lord, I'm not worthy. I'm a dirty son of God. I mean, nonsense. Is somebody following me carefully? What's the inheritance number 10? The nations and peoples of the earth to be one for Christ. The nations and the peoples of the earth. That's a large asking. Psalm 2 verse 8. He said, ask of me. The hidden for your inheritance. The pagans, the unsaved for your inheritance. And the utmost part of the earth for your possession. So we can possess the nations. Are you with me? You can go to a neighborhood and claim it for Christ. Heaven is so happy. This neighborhood, I will pray and walk it until everybody is hungry for God. This neighborhood, I'm going to carefully pray on every house in this neighborhood. Praying that they will have hunger and thirst for God and they will go to church on Sunday. People like you do it globally in different capitals. 
They mark out a neighborhood and say, if some 2 verse 8 is true, ask of me the hidden for inheritance and the utmost part of the earth for your possession. I'm going to ask the hidden for inheritance, these 100 houses here. It will take me three weeks. Without anybody knowing and camera looking at me, I told the house, every occupant, I command you to be hungry for God. Next Sunday, find your way in church. Holy Ghost, drive them to church. Instead of them playing, what do you call it now? Uh, this thing they play on the open field. Tiger Wood. God, no. They are not hungry for God. They are not hungry. And you are satisfied. And you walk past them. That's the reason you are in this land. That's the reason. Basic reason behind the mind of God bringing you here. That you may pray the inheritance of God back to God and claim them. Women like you. In Ireland, long ago, the gym church like this. There was a river. Now, we ran prayer school for several years in Dublin. Bus load came from different cities of Ireland. Cork, Drogheda, and all of that. Pastor Isaac is always a mommy's only here. And I taught something close to this on strategic warfare. There's a river, and so as I live in one of the largest cities in um, Ireland, okay? Drogheda, where many of the pastors live. As you exit the city, you meet a big river and so many bridges on it. The mystery about the river is that every week or every two weeks, one, two, three, four people jump off the bridge and commit suicide. So they call it the river of death. River of death. The authorities install cameras, they post their security men to deter men from killing themselves after being drunk. And you know that the national symbol of Ireland is the harp. Stout. Oh my God, are you with me? The harp is a symbol of stout. And it's drunk in it. So early in the morning, you meet Irish people on the street totally drunk. It's too poor. Because that's the territorial behavior. Okay? Anyway, so people get drunk and kill themselves. And people listen to this. And seven days, prayer school. And understanding became fruitful. So we can ask more than bread and fish from God. We can receive power and we can do it. So two deaconesses took it upon themselves. With all this teaching, we must do something. This river must no longer kill people. So after we were gone, they took a three-day fast. Then at midnight, they took the bottles of anointing and we consecrated for them, went to the river. Their pastor did not even know. Went to the river, descended down the bridge and got to the brinks of the river and scooped the water in their hand, threw it to the heavens, and then made prophetic pronouncements. We judge the marine powers of death in this river. Thou that kill people unnecessarily, in the name of Jesus Christ, we sentence you to death. We suffocate you. By this oil, we choke you. Marine powers, death in these waters. You waters, you are healed. Thou shalt no longer defer or kill people. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. 20 minutes, they were done, and they prayed in tongues. Listen to me, it's on record. A week passed by, nobody joined. Two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months, three months, six months before the government and the media took note of it. They never saw blood floating bodies there, so the papers began to scream. Six months have passed by, Nobody died. So when they read the papers in church and people are giving thanks, the two thickness will look at each other and smile. Finally, they told their pastor, we did it. We did it. And not till tomorrow, this almost 11 years ago, not till tomorrow, the river never devoured people. Two women carried the battle thus far beyond bread and fish miracles. So you can get up, mark the neighborhood, the houses that are beautiful, but with dead people inside. And I say, we receive resurrection and life, hunger for God. Just gently, it's as if you want to greet people, hunger for God. It works like magic. Everybody, including kids, go to church and worship God on Sunday. Don't stay indoors. And you can mark 100 houses. Angels will be applauding. Applauding. It goes beyond bread and fish Christianity. Ask of me the hidden for your inheritance and the utmost part of the earth for your possession. 
Is somebody listening to me? So all good things you have around are your inheritance. Follow me carefully. We will soon pray. Every good, somebody say every good thing. That's why I said earlier on, that juicy job that the field doesn't belong to you, it's yours. That strategic appointment is yours. Technically, prophetically, biblically speaking, it belongs to the children of the kingdom. But those who don't know God are sitting, the Amorites, the Gigas, they are sitting on your inheritance. It's time to fight. Somebody say it's time to fight. Time to fight. When you fight well, you win well. A brother in Lagos, no, in battle, ran to me. Assistant manager, he was under a, a, a GM of Western Zone of an insurance company. Prayerless elder in a church. And because of that, the devil messed him up. So the MD does, didn't like him at all. And they wanted him out at all costs. So they wrote a lot of petitions to corporate headquarters in Lagos. He did this, he did this, he did this, he did this. So, and he got with, whereas he brought the greatest number of clients to the company insurance, national insurance company. So when the die was cast, it was obvious that he was going to be dismissed because the allegations were weighty. So he got wind of it and ran to my office, panting and screaming, Lord, help me, help me, sir. I'm done for. Help me, sir. Help me, sir. What's the matter? He downloaded the information and said, simple case. Simple case. Who is the NGN? He downloaded the information and said, I don't believe her. We call them unbell. Unbell, unbeliever. Who doesn't know God? Humanizer, number one, crying. Drunkard, number two, crying. Smoker, number three, crying. He never go to church, number four, crying. A criminal in the court of heaven. Now, legislating against you, a child of the kingdom, foul. And I said, all right. How long do you pray every day, sir? He said, if I pray at all, maybe five, ten minutes. I said, you have committed suicide. Suicide. And they are going to hang you. So I said, all right, to start with, I'm placing you on three hours prayer for this week. He said, ha! Ah! He almost collapsed. Okay, but you go on. Because it's like three hours, me that can, before I can manage 10 minutes, so three hours. They will generate some measure of spiritual energy. Then on Friday, you are going to do a VG. I say, sir, impossible. I say, well, the door is open. Can you leave my, I'm not a magician. This is how we do it. Your energy level must increase to take on that man. I will join you provided you follow this protocol. He looked up and I said, I will try, sir. And try he did. So on Friday, did a vigil of six hours. The wife pushed him six hours. He managed to pray till Sunday, Monday. On Tuesday, he got a message from corporate headquarters in Lagos. My end has come. My end has come. And the board was meeting. Now before they got to, I wouldn't know what happened. You know every company have eyes, mole, spies. Who download the who get information about every staff. So the dozier of the MD or the yeah the manager that wanted him out was already on the table. So when he got there, they asked him to wait. He waited, he was praying like mad. Finally they called him Mr. So and so. And they looked at him, the chairman stood up and said, uh, over this weekend the board met over the petitions we have received against you. But then we say, let's search it out. The petitioner and the one big petitioner, let's look at their records. And behold, your record is the finest record in this company. And your MD has committed so many offenses that we can no longer tolerate him. So the board has decided, we have discovered that two promotions, they have, you know, you missed two promotions. All right? Number one, you got your promotion, double promotion. Number two, you have a letter to go and replace the man who has been sent on composing leaf without coming back. Good morning. He almost collapsed. That was Tuesday. Somebody was sitting on his inheritance and somebody wanted to get him out of his inheritance. It took just warfare of five days. 
for him to recover what legitimately belonged to him. I say, how can, can they get you rid of you like that? You are a child of the king, you are neither. Forget it. Who is this man? Unbeliever. He's not qualified. His crimes are high in the court of heaven. I'm saying that because of many of you who take anything that life throws at you. Are you with me? Ask him. Many people met us in the prayer school. One person working in Chevron in Lagos in Pastor Ayo's church. Pastor Ayo research of the largest church in south southeast of Nigeria. Okay, south south. We run annual prayer school there for the past 21 years. Thousands of people. And this manager just came, he was part of the participant. The third day Wednesday was weeping and holly. Chevron sacked me, sir. Chevron sacked me. I don't know. We're in the midst of prayer school. I'll be sad. I'll be sad. And I say, impossible, impossible. You're in the midst of a prayer conference. They dismiss you. So we prayed over him, anointed him, and they told him, second morning, dress as the manager you are, go back to your office. He said, they go to call police. I said, go back. And everybody prayed overnight. Second morning, he went back to the office because he has cleared his table three days ago. He got to the office. Everybody saw him. Why are you not part of those who are signed by the um, management? He said, well, I've come to the office. So they called the Ojibo in that department to see. And the man said, well, we got rid of you. And some many people can't manage this number of staff anymore. You are part of them. Why are you here? He said, I've come to the Zoom because I feel that I'm not supposed to be sacked. And the man looked at you. You are not supposed to. He kept on looking and looking. After five minutes of looking at each other, the man said, Okay, I'm going to see to it. So he went upstairs to meet fellow whites. And they sat down for minutes to determine his feet. And the man came back and said, You are so bold. You are so bold. I like your courage. Well, we just decided to recall you. Good morning. Congratulations. He's still there till today. This was about six years ago. Six years ago. They are not black, so whites with their principles. But they bow to superior fire. In the name of the Son of God, the devil will never take anything away from you again. Yeah. Lift up to two and say, everything I have lost to the enemy, I recover, I recover, I recover, I recover, I recover. Everything I lost to the adversary, I recover. In Jesus' name, we pray. Start up. Remain. I think that I'm preaching about two people now. Some good things have been taken away from you. Are you with me? Two of you are here. I don't know whether you are the one that lost it. Your precious thing. You've been walked out of your legitimate inheritance. Your father is the owner, but they walked you out. Maybe for one reason or the other. As the Lord leave it. Before the expiry of April, you are returning back to your glory. Return him back to your glory. Now rest a cry. Say, I recover everything I lost to ignorance, to powerlessness, to prayerlessness, and to the enemy. I recover, I recover, I recover, I recover my inheritance. Prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your hands. My inheritance in America. Return to me. My inheritance in America. Return. Return. Prayer.
In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated and let me close. Four quick points for the sake of recording and we're done. Access to inheritance. Access to inheritance. One, your access to inheritance can be in four ways. One, place or location dependent. Somebody say place or location dependent. Say it loud. Place or location dependent. Except to get to certain places, life will not deliver your inheritance. Except you are in certain locations. Follow me carefully. I'm teaching deep tonight because I'm not going to exact it. But if you get it right, you will pray simple prayer and doors will open. Because it functions by understanding and knowledge. Okay? Once you are convinced that it's yours, your father God owns the heavens and the earth. And he can seed to you anything from his portion of the earth. Are you with me? Then no man born of a woman is allowed to sit on your blessing. No one. So with the knowledge you can unseat the one sitting on your blessing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Location dependent. I was looking for a job desperately after my master's in 83. You are fisheries. And because God has given the privilege of being a student leader all along in Nigeria, NIFES national leader, you know, so I'm in touch with all our leaders, senior friends, we call them senior lecturers who are Christian, who will come to fellowship with us. So the VC of Benin, Adam Ubeki, is still alive. He used to be chairman of NIFES, and I was his student leader under him. He knew me. And then the VC of uh, the new university, Futa Akure, Professor Francis, he left from you. He said, oh, Moses, I'm going to give you a job. You are going to start the Department of Fishery. I actually was there for one week, mapping out fish farm and all the departments, because he just said, it's a walkover. Ladies and gentlemen, for two years, I went to Akure more than almost 16 times. Come today, come tomorrow. Senate has not met. Come today, come tomorrow. Then I change over to Bini. And then Mubeke said, Moses, you are the leader under me. You know, come to Bini. I went to Ekenwa campus, the main campus. You are going to be in the fishery department as one of our Blah, blah. I almost died in accident on the way to Bini. So this was from 83 to 85. No, for end of 85. Now, sudden, Lord, I've gone around to all the campuses. It's like the doors are closed. God said, did I ask you to go to Bini? Did I ask you to go to Akure? Your inheritance is in you. It's in you. Ah! Pronto! I went to my HOD who lectured us, who tutored us. He signed our certificates in BSc. Sir, I want a job here. He said, I'm sorry for the past three years. All appointments frozen. And when they say it's frozen, it's frozen. So, they say it's frozen, no appointment anywhere. Whether in Nassau, non-academic staff or academic staff, no appointment frozen. So, I said, God, you told me my inheritance is here. Now, I'm from a and back to here. The man said, he said, your inheritance is here. So, I fasted again, three days dry, went back to him after two weeks. He said, I told you, what, are you, are you deaf? I said, all appointments are frozen. So, I went back, oh God, God said, your inheritance is in your hand. Here I will make you. Ah. So I took a month again of praying with all my friends and went back and said, if you dare come back here again, there shall be trouble. Because I think you understand English. I said appointment frozen. Have no department is employing any lecturer. Forget it. I went back to God. God said, your inheritance is here. And it was so loud. So God said, go and tell him, I the Lord said, you're my inheritance here. So I'm being a CNS man from C. It's an elder, a cherub and seraphim. And they believe in buying your Lua we. God says the Lord. So I went there blessing with fasting and prayer one day. And I said, Prof, the Lord said my inheritance is there. He said, What did you say? I said, The Lord said. He said, You mean the Lord said? I said, Yes. He said, Oh, so what do in your money? Ben, no, so ah, holy, the Lord said my inheritance. 
Three times we get to say, you mean, I said, the Lord said, my inheritance. Said, ah, if the Lord said, Moses, wait here, I will do something. He took his car, drove to the VC's office. He said, there's a crazy young man here, sir. Who said the Lord told him his inheritance is here, that he must be a poor. The VC said, if God says, who are two of us? And VC, you are you are HOD. We can't disobey God. All right? He brought us his drawer and wrote to the register, please defrost one academic position for the man the Lord sent. In four years, I was the only one employed in the old university. And there the Lord made me until I threw down the toilet in 94 when the anointing was too big for the campus. But God made me in Jua. My inheritance. From there, I've launched out to different parts. That's why my ministry is located there. Who I would visit everybody, come governor, they come to the prayer tower. We minister to them, first ladies of all kinds and all that. Now I understand why God say, our Kura is not the place. Sometimes your location determines your allocation. In the name of Jesus, the wind of the Spirit will blow you to the place of your inheritance. Yeah. Lift up your voice, say, thou wind of the Spirit. Oh my God, do find it difficult to talk loud here. Yeah? Say, thou wind of the Spirit, blow me to the place of my inheritance. Wind of the Holy Ghost, blow me. In Jesus' name we pray. Until a man is in certain location, he may never flourish in life. Until you get to that location. I seek out to find himself in Gerar. Genesis 26. Before he flourished. Baba Abraham had to be relocated from the all of the Chaldeans to the land of Canaan before his destiny exploded. I pray for everyone, whether in city or state in America here. Where you will explode. May the wind of the spirit blow you there. Sometimes your inheritance can be location dependent. Location dependent. Hebrews 11 8 said, God called Abraham to the land of Canaan that he would receive for an inheritance. He had to get to Canaan before his destiny exploded. So it can be location dependent. Number two, it can be time dependent. Time dependent. You don't miss that timing. When you miss your time, you miss your season. Time dependent. Number three, it can be person dependent. The man you must never miss. The person you must never miss because he carries the access to your inheritance. Are you with me, somebody? That's why you have to pray tonight. Whoever is carrying the key to my inheritance, Lord, let our paths cross. Let our eyes see. The man you must not miss. They are stationed in different parts of the world. Are you with me? But God is a master strategist. He said, the goings of a man are determined by the Lord. Are you with me? In the name of Christ, the Son of God. You will not miss the man who has access to your inheritance. Are you there with me? I remember Daddy. Let me start with Daddy. Because your inheritance can be healing and somebody can carry it. In the north of Nigeria, barely two years ago, they were doing Holy Ghost Night at Igus Square. And the protocol is tight, both by redeemed security and federal security because of the personality of daddy. Here is one Aousa Alaji, Muslim, sick unto death, rich. All medical efforts are failed and it was pining away. And most of them like that, they secretly watch 
the Holy Ghost, and I drove TV, and they see me. Some of them pray, and God answers. And about this one, he wanted personal attention, and he knew that what his people must not know that he's going to a prophet. Number two, how will he access the prophet? But he knew that a meeting was holding in a good square. So, and security is tight, and when that is coming in, police, SSS, redeem protocol, everybody's there, police in left, right, center, and they take him to the VIP seat up there before they call him to the podium. Whatever happened, this man smuggled himself, you know, to the narrow passage, entry into that Eagle Square. The, the, the iron door opens around like this, just like you enter into a bar. So he, he stood there, well dressed, a fairly elderly man, and nobody suspected he was there. All right? So as people were bringing daddy in, bringing daddy in, you come here. Come here. So, assuming that this daddy come, you be coming. You're not daddy, but be daddy tonight. <laughs> no, just go there and start coming. Go there and start coming. So, assuming daddy is coming here, just come, keep on coming, and he's passing. You know, he beaded his time as soon as daddy got to him. He grabbed his hand. Before people could say, hey, 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 he placed his hand. He said, shake now, shake now. And he said, they just literally burned with our truth. He just said, shake now, shake now. He got his healing instantly. It was after weeks he wrote to daddy. He said, can you remember that man who forced your hand on his head? I was dying. Number one, I didn't want my people to know I'm coming to a Christian prophet. Number two, there's no way to get across to you other than what I did. So daddy told us that he sent a big check. He wanted to return it. Daddy said, take it. It's a blessing. He sent a fat check offering. He's alive today. He knew his inheritance is person dependent. If he missed that, he would be in the grave now. So, sometimes your inheritance can be person dependent. Are you with me, somebody? A former chief of air staff, while he was air commander, I was lecturing in the classroom. Why somebody called him and said, two people are waiting for me. I had a redeemed friend, okay? And that one got born again. He's not, he wasn't yet born again at that time. But he was dying. Be an air commander, they've taken him to Russia, almost about five countries, and he was a fighter pilot. Now, he was sick unto death, but every medical examination didn't see anything in him, but he was wasting the way. And the thing is that they pursuing them as the next chief of air staff after his promotion, and his enemies say, no. Over our dead body, except we are. So they worked on him. So and now because I preach in him regularly, his friend was in Akme, seeing the power of God and the fire of God. He said, I have a friend. I have a man of God. He's in the body. He's son of daddy. Please. So they came around 5 o'clock and waited till 7 o'clock when I came back from the class and we had fellowship. So they say, Excuse me, they were waiting at the door of my apartment. And I said, what are you looking for? They say, this air commander, I say, I say, well, I mean, his rank does not terrify me. He say, he needs your help. He needs your, I say, look, I have a fellowship now. I'm going to church. So I left them there. I just bluffed them. And I went to church. I came back at my night at it. They were still there. And I said, oh, I can't see you till tomorrow. And both of them on their knees. We beg you in the name of God. Pray for us. I'm tired. Now, Mr. Man, where do you live? He said, I live at a papa. All right, send your... Security, people, you know, come for me after class. I will, I will come to a papa with mine. So we went there in the night around 10 o'clock. And we ministered till about 2 a.m. He vomited all kinds of manifestations. But those powers got broken. We got back to a banner around 3 a.m. under Air Force escort. Because he sent people with guns. I said, insisted on sleeping there. Too. And after God broke that thing, the following month he was promoted vice air marshal. And then by six months later on, he became chief of your staff. He swallowed all the insult I threw to him because he knew I was a man he must not miss. At that time. So he said, he had brigadier general in the Air Force. Everything I told him to do, he, to be, he did because he was dying. And something told him, this man has something for you. And he swallowed it. 
every man that is carrying your blessing, you will not miss them. Are you with me? Lastly, your inheritance can be warfare dependent. This is where we we'll start tomorrow. Warfare dependent. How many things did I say now? Number one, your inheritance can be what? Location dependent. Number two, time dependent. Number three, person dependent. The man you must not miss. And four, warfare dependent. We are concluding the prayer school in the battle. When two gentlemen just drove into the church, they met the fireworks of the prayer school. The man sat at the back. I didn't know I was looking at the multi, multi millionaire. And he said, I enjoy this prayer school, sir. Hey, can I register? I said, register. How many people are supposed to be here? It's 500. How many do we have? Less than two. I say, whether they are here or not, he drew a check off. He said, 500,000, 1 million to cover everybody. So this is too sweet. So, but my main problem is that I want a bit a license to bring in the first 4G telecom in Nigeria. I won't name the company. The first 4G in Nigeria. And I want the bid, 3.5 billion I paid to, uh, what do you call it now? Commission, what do you call this? S, bless your soul, NCC. So they seized the license under the president that expired, the northern one who died in Azo Villa. Well, you call it, I won't because of recording. So, anyway, you have mentioned the name, we can't hide it. So, Madam President sat on the beat because she felt that a northern arm. Um, Friend of theirs, you have the license. Why should it be you? And this man is a consultant with an Israeli company. They were bringing the first 4G into Nigeria. Mobile telephone. Ah, they thought it was a joke. So he protested. Well, I want this bid that to release my bid. But he made noise and he sent EFCC after him. Before he knew what was happening, he was in jail at Awula War, underground jail at Awula War Road, Ikoji, EFCC office. They kept him there for two months. Solitary confinement. Make noise, you are gone. Ha, ha, ha. My lances, I want it, I want it, I want it. So finally, Christians went there, you see. Christians went there, prayed for him, and one of them said, Get an attorney, got a lawyer, and sued them, and the team blew up. So finally, they released him on bail. It was that window that made him look for assistance anywhere. My money, 3.5 million loan from bank. Interest is climbing up. My license is not there. We're not started operating. I'm in trouble. He went around Lagos until listening to one of my tapes. I preached in City of David. All right, City of David, via Lagos. He listened to that tape. Ah! Whoever preached this message. So he sought round until he got to Ibadan. So when he saw the prayer school, he said, This is what I'm looking for. All right, your case is easy. There's, is it angels or whom I'm mean sitting or your heritage, the nonsense? We say, is me, Madam President, a connivance with the Minister of Information who has died now. Uh, Dora, Dora, whatever. Akuji. Because she was friendly with Mrs. President. Okay? Both of them were friends. So we went into war. I played him on several vigils. People went to the court, judging the case in Abuja to do prophetic prayer. He went back to Lagos and did a number of Fiji together with these pastors. And then I said, wait seven days. The hand of God is going to move. Your inheritance is coming back. He said, amen, 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 amen. Before the expansion of the seven day, Mr. President had deteriorated badly. Took him to Saudi Arabia. He came back half dead. Within two weeks, he expired. The judge that used to judge the case kept on saying, my hands are tied. Mr. Man, you have a good case, but order from above tied my hands. I can't release the license. Now, Mr. President, I packed up. Madam First Lady is no longer First Lady. The Minister of Information lost her job because that government is over. Two weeks after that, the case was called, and the outside just sat down and said, she I mean, he said one outside what? 
in the court. That is, I'm now at liberty. And I call his name, say, Mr. Ma, my hands are no longer tied because the obstacles are removed. I order the federal government within 24 hours to release your license. Bah, I court judge, federal I court judge in Abuja. I was in Dallas when his telephone message came because we need 24 hours. ESCC produced the license. He called me, sir. I got my license. I got it. I got it. But it was warfare in different dimensions. Are you with me? If we didn't fight, he would have lost the license and the bank would have hung him 3.5 billion to start that 4G. It would have like been suicide. But God had to neutralize a whole president for his sake. Stand on your feet. <laughs> oh my God. Is somebody listening to me? That's a God in heaven that changes the times and the seasons. I said to the, you know, I'm sweating now, unction. From this moment, you will never lose any good thing in life again. Whether it's the fruit of your body, pregnancy, or money, or job, no unbeliever will take away the good thing that God has given you. Oh, we always, you know, I'm preaching this deliberately as a seal of a hundred days fast. You can't fast hundred days and do have something to show. You understand me? No. It's it will be an abuse of your body, abuse of time. It will be a great waste. One hundred, some people fast seven days, they come back with basket of miracles. Some 21 days. They are heavy laden, but hundred days, my goodness, it's not common. And so two weeks, three weeks, three months after hundred days, you have nothing to show for it. Other than loss of jobs, loss of this, it will not happen. Amen. That's why I said, when Pastor Bayo told me, I said, God, what do these people need? He said, speak on their inheritance. So when they understand that every good thing that God created is theirs, that I own everything, and nobody has the right to deny them or their soul, people can now begin to demand in prayer with understanding my inheritance. This thing is not, the, uh, it's not the will of God for me to have it. Uh, maybe it's not my cross. Maybe it's not the No, sir. <laughs> Are you listening to me? I've broken your rules. I've maybe spent one hour addition, but it doesn't matter. It's not funny for my body either. But once I feel satisfied in my spirit, the heavens are open. Amen. So tomorrow, I'll be more high than this. I'm you know, I'm not the kind of preach gently like our daddy. You know. I'm violent. Just like my son, Leke. Violent. But if I go that way, your emotions will be too high. You won't assimilate. Are you with me? You will lose the flavor of the teaching, the understanding. You will rely on the emotion. But I want to go the way of teaching. Let it sink. And tomorrow we can now begin to do high caliber firing of our machine guns. Are you with me? And even in 24 hours, there are some that will recover what they have lost. I said they shall recover what they lost. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now your first prayer will be just a demand seven. We are going to start with that tomorrow. America, America, give me my inheritance. Life will be sweet for you here. I say life will be sweet for you here. Everywhere we are taught men like this, in Ireland, in Canada, Russia, our people live where who are Christians. They are no longer underdog. Ditto for our people who are in corporate bodies in Nigeria, Christians who are billionaires. The line is called warfare. That Tawa Yiban Shogu, you want to say Tirat, you want to say Mantra. If I don't do warfare, they will run me over. So our people go to warfare. Some come to policemen, commissioner, come to a prayer school to learn in order to survive and thrive. If by reason of Christianity, you won't do charm, you won't do fetish, you won't do amana, you won't join court. And you are not violent in prayer. You have committed suicide. They finish you. 
The black man has no option. Are you with me? Is it that charm, tira, mantra, occultism, or war, prayer? But our faith allows only prayer. So you don't become underdog in society. Life is not cheap like that. All those people you are seeing, many of them are deep in the country, including the politicians of America. Freemason. Nobody gets to White House without being initiated. Go on, go and read it. Nobody gets there without being initiated into Freemason. That White House is not, it's an altar, strong altar. Only strong men get there. So don't say, oh, they are wise. We are this. <laughs> it's all over the world. Not to talk about Japanese or the Chinese. And I hear you to just pray, come for prayer meeting. The only means of empowerment you have, you are not doing. That's why somebody with a PhD in medical science and physiology is sweeping toilets. How can and you are a child of the king? And your father is the owner of all things. In America, the wise, the unbeliever who don't go to church, who are professional adulterers, they put you under to wash toilet, wash dead bodies. You collect Toroko and you are happy. Whereas you are technically supposed to be on top. Forget about your accent. Are you with me? In the scheme of God, it doesn't count at all. In the scheme of forget about your color. If God moves on your behalf, then we forget your background, your antecedents, everything about you. They forget. Because God has moved on your behalf while you pay the price. As the Lord lives, as many as are hearing me, life will beautify you. Life will dignify you. Just three quick prayers, I'm done. Oh, America, 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 give me my loud and Now, I say your heritage can be location dependent. Are you with me? And because God brought you here for whatever reason, by whatever means, it means. There's something about your inheritance in America, isn't it? But well, somebody like me, I can never live in America. It won't happen. The inheritance is not here. It's not here. I flourish. I'm satisfied. I'm okay in Nigeria. I can't. You give me a click and I'll throw it off completely. I don't need it. It's not meaningful, it's not meaningful to me. There's nothing you have, I don't have more dying off. Because my inheritance is tied to Africa. But Jehovah enabled you to come here. It means there's something about your inheritance here. And unless you demand, Caleb said, Joshua, the Lord spoke to you and me. That you should give me. Why are you holding it? This 45 years after, give me my inheritance. He made the demand before it happened. Now talk to the location now. Location America, America, America. Deliver my head. Good. Lift up your two hands. I say loud and clear. Say, Oh, America. Oh, my God. Only one person is talking. So, Oh, America. Oh, America. Give me my heritage. Again. Again. Seven times. Yes, open your mouth. Give me my inheritance. America, America, Maryland, in the name of Jesus. I command my inheritance. I demand my inheritance right now. Prayer. your mouth say it out demand it
In Jesus name we pray. As you are praying now, there are some of you who are doing a job, jobs you don't like that make you have depression. You don't like it, but a beggar has no choice. But thou art not a beggar. You have a choice. And you're going to pray now. Every Amorite, every Canaanite, that means a lot. Are you with me? Sitting on my inheritance, surrender. This must have been the prayer of Israel as they got to near Canaan. The occupants who are there, the Gigazite, the Gigazite, the Amorites, the Jebusite, who are the owners of the land. God said, I'm going to get them out. There are some people sitting on inheritance. The job is you have, that office. Some unbelievers, some drunkards, some women, they are sitting there. God is going to move them out for your sake. Oh my God, are you with me? Lift up your hands. Say, every power sitting on my heritage, surrender, surrender, prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Final prayers. Open your eyes. I'm careful of what I'm doing tonight. Remember, many of you have fasted 100 days. Isn't it? Even if it's 80 or 50 or 20. And nobody fasts for three days. Before God and man. The kind of Hashem, your man authority, with 100 days of fast. It's like nuclear bomb. So I go to speak with the tongue of authority. Are you with me? My inheritance on many corners of the earth locate me this April. Are you with me? From an, you can be called from Dubai. You can be called from China. <laughs> Anything can happen. Are you with me? You will use the mouth and washe to speak out. It's not pastor alone that has authority. That mouth has fasted and prayed for 100 days, 50 days, 80 days. Your mouth, your lips is not ordinary anymore. Before God am I. That tongue is not ordinary. But you see to call those things to your direction. Are you with me? My inheritance from the four corners of the earth. Are you locate me? Loud and clear. Lift up your hands. My inheritance. My inheritance. From the four corners of the earth. Locate me in the name of Jesus. Prayer. Pray that prayer three minutes. Three minutes. In Jesus' name we pray. Join your hands together. Join your hands together. Join the hands together, everybody. Join the hands together. Lift them to the God of heaven. I'd like for you to be a prophet over somebody's destiny now. My brother, my sister, are you with me? In the name of Jesus, the hand of God push you into your inheritance. Lift up your two hands. My brother, my sister. Loud and clap. Your post, the person on the left, on the right. My brother, my sister. I prophesy. Let the hand of God 
the hand of grace push you now into your inheritance enter prayer yes enter enter into healings into deliverance into emancipation into promotion into favor into open doors enter 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 One minute more. In Jesus' name we pray. Stretch your hands towards the altar. Because Christ has died for all you are demanding for. I ask that life will deliver them to you. Because the blood of Emmanuel has been shed as a proof that the will maker died already. Therefore, everything contained in the will of Jesus receive access to them in the name of Jesus. Your promotion, receive it now. Your connection, receive it now. Your open door, receive it now. Your peace of mind, your joy, your peace, receive in the name of Jesus. Your fruitfulness, receive it now. Your fresh fire, fresh anointing your gift of the holy ghost receive it now receive 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 life will no longer be hostile to you america will favor you because America is part of your father's territory. Therefore, this land shall favor you. Maryland shall favor you. Here, you are a bona fide Israelite son of Abraham. You shall not live like a Gibeonite. You will not be among hewers of wood, drawer of water. You will not be a slave of man. In the name of Jesus, Oh, America, oh, America, oh, America. Hear the word of the Lord. Deliver unto them their due portion, their due inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ. Those appointments and jobs you love, you cherish very well, have access to them. Yes, receive them now. By the mercy, by the favor, by the grace of God. In the name of Jesus. Those of you who need healing, let the hand of healing come upon you mightily. Be healed of your diseases. Waiting women become fruitful this year. In the name of Jesus. Yes, anyone who has failed an exam or interview or one thing, one, two times, the last time you fail as God, thou shall be a standing success in the next time in the name of Jesus Christ. Failure is out of your life. I legislate out failure in the name of Jesus. Every good thing, the whole world is yours. I command 
and unfettered access to the good things of this land. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Three times say, I receive my heritage. Somebody shout the Lord and say, Hallelujah. God bless you, be seated.